the true prophets of God are not received well. They are always misunderstood, taken for granted, called liars and false. This has been happening for years and when you think people would learn from past mistakes of others, they don't. You know why we are confused when it comes to the voice of God and the devil? We call good bad and bad good. That's why we don't know which is which and which to believe. Because we are the first deceivers of ourselves. We lie to ourselves when it comes to wrongdoing because we want to do the wrong instead of right. So we tweak the message to accommodate sin. We use also scriptures to justify why we sin and call it good. When you tweak something, it means that you twist or pull sharply. It also means that you improve by making adjustments to it. In Deuteronomy 4 and verse 2 says, He shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall he diminish out from it. That he may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. No. You remember the story in Agai 1. Agai 1. When Agai was sent to prophesy to the people about rebuilding the temple. And they were putting it off. They were finding all kind of excuse. Let's just put it that way. To put it off. To to not go towards it, to not build it because they were building their houses. And I always say it's better to be about God's business than our business because God will take care of our business. God wanted to take care of their business, but they didn't see it that way. They were blindsided by the fact that, oh, we're building our homes. We're building our homes. We are good. But God wanted them to rebuild his temple because he wanted to do something greater in their lives. But they reject the prophet. They reject the prophecy. And they find they found all, all the excuses to not go towards building the temple. I mean, just imagine the excuses that they came up with. You know, we, we as humans are so full of excuses when it comes to working for the kingdom of God, working for God. We are so full of excuses. And the Lord has been saying, rebuild the temple. Just as he's been saying, rebuild the nation, rebuild the churches, rebuild. Come back to me. You know, rebuild the nations from an ungodly nation to a godly nation. But we keep pushing him aside. We keep pushing his is men and women servant aside each time they come with the message because we're we are we are doing our own thing and we are we have not come into the realization that 
we're not doing anything for the, the, the keeper of our souls, the, the God who is keeping us alive. We're not doing what we, we, we know we're supposed to do, what we have to do. And we are refusing his servants and thinking, oh, we are only refusing his servants and pushing them away. But we are also refusing him. By saying, not yet. Not yet. He wants to do something bigger in our lives. And we are saying, not yet. So, a guy was sent to confirm this word to the people. It clearly states... It clearly states in verse 2... Let me find that a guy one and verse two. This is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say the time has not yet come to rebuild the Lord's house. But the time the time came long time. The time has been for a while. But he had to send messengers because they of themselves have not seen that the time is now. Right? But God is asking, if not now, when? That's what the Lord is asking. If not now, when? If we don't think it is now, the things of, of God are now, when do we think? It's like an altar call and sinners coming to an altar call. They, they came for the prayer. They came for the miracles. But they do not want the healer. They don't want the miracle worker. But they, want, they came for the prayer for healing and they came for the miracles. But the one who's to perform it, they don't want him. Right? Deuteronomy 12 and verse 32 says, What, what thing soever I command you, observe to do it. What thing so ever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. Whatsoever God has command you to do as a people, as a nation, as a church, the, the word of God clearly states in Deuteronomy 12.32 says, Though I command you, observe to do it. I command you, so observe to do it. It wasn't I who said it. It's the word of God. Whatsoever God says you're to do, do it. So in Agai 1 and 4, Is it a time for you yourselves to be living in your panel houses while this house remains in ruin? That's what Agai 1 and verse 4 says. It's asking a question. Is it a time for you yourselves to be living in your panel houses while this house remains in ruin? Some of us have been living below our capacity. We have been working, eating, sleeping below our capacity. We function even below that. 
we are in one place in this life, some of us. And because we don't like change and we don't welcome change, we, a lot of us will remain in one place in life. And some of us who don't want to remain there, we are there for too long because of our faith and where it lies and because we don't listen. This is caused by disobedience. We are too content with the little that we have, so much so that little is enough. It's the norm. It's the norm for most people. There's a saying, there's a saying here in Jamaica, you ask somebody, what's going on? Everything okay? And they will tell you what's going on. And behind that, it will follow up. They will follow up to say, it's just life. But I often ask people, is it life? Is that the way life is supposed to go? Is, it, is that the way life is supposed to be? Because I don't, I myself don't accept mediocrity. And I'm saying to others, you accept just what you see in your life. Just what is there. Because, I mean, there must be so much more to your life than what you are seeing than what you are living in than how you see it there must be so much more and some people hold on to that oh everybody go through this in life and it's just life oh You have little. It is great to be grateful for that little. But when you tell me that the place that you're in that is so small and confined and uncomfortable... When you tell me that it's enough. And when I look at the norm in the lives of people that are so small and uncomfortable and they are content with, oh, it's enough. It is the norm. And I'm saying, God, the God that is the creator of the universe, the creator of heaven and earth, he is omni. He is omnipresent. He is omnificient. He is omni. Right? He is so big that there is no cap. He's so big that he has no limit. And because of disobedience, we stay in small confinements and we don't branch out. We don't become what he has called us to be. We, 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 we never get it. Some of us have missed the mark. Some of us are missing the mark. Some have died not fulfilling destiny. Some are sitting down just waiting to die, never fulfill destiny. 
Psalms 24 says, Psalms 24 and verse 1, The world and all that is in it belong to the Lord. The earth and all who lives on it are his. So, when you tell me that defeat is all you see, and defeat is all you are feeling, or, or that's the only thing manifesting around you, then you're not telling me anything yet. Who is your God? I will ask. Because he's always speaking, he's always giving instructions through prophets and prophetesses. They are there to, to usher you into greater God, God through them, ushering you into greater. But because of disobedience and nobody's listening to God, they sit in confinements. One corner of this world, of this earth, not moving anywhere, never winning a soul for the kingdom of God, never doing the work of God, never taking up their cross and walking with Christ Jesus. Because through the Son, only can you get to the Father. The world and all that is in it belongs to this omni-God. The creator of the universe. We accept mediocrity too much for children of God. We are too common, too ordinary. Verse 9. I'm using the New King James Version. Psalms 24 and verse 9 says, Filling wide the, ga fling, flinging wide the gates open, the ancient doors and the great king will come in. Fling wide the gates open, the ancient doors and the great king will come in. Give unto God what is due unto God. You are minding your own business, doing your own thing, and God's not in it. He's constantly saying, leave your business and come over to my business. Build my temple, win souls for, my, for the kingdom of God. Feed the poor. Clothe the naked. All these things. But you are still saying, not now. And he's asking, when? 